too much. Looks good. Thank you. All right, so we are having our first meal in Singapore. We really haven't eaten since this morning, since yet. Thank you. So I have a feeling this is going to get destroyed quickly. No. So what we got is a, uh, a giant pineapple fried rice and this uh, humongous pork shank. The thing is like a Fred Flintstone sized uh, pork shank. Mm. Really good guys. Got uh, big pieces of pineapple in there. Mm. Very good. Very good. Very fresh. So, uh, got some vegetables. Mm. Very good. I got my uh, my tiger beer here. Oh, really good. Okay, well, whatever we don't eat of the rice, I'll take it back to the room for a snack. Mm. All kinds of stuff in this uh, seafood rice. Is this seafood inside? Yeah. So this is the the lamb shank, no, pork. pork shank. And here you can see a nice big, uh, nice big piece of it. Wow. Super tender. That's good. Not exactly hot weather food. This is more like I would think of uh, winter food. Wow, that's really tasty. Ooh, very good. Very good. Too. Oh, it's like really big pieces of pineapple. So we can contrast uh, Singapore and Vietnam a little bit. The Vietnamese um, definitely have different cleanliness standards in their street food, I would say. Um, kind of adventurous of what we ate. I really don't think there was a problem with any of the food per se. What really worried me about the street food was just your typical vending cart stuff. Vendors don't have anywhere to wash their hands. They don't really have anywhere to wash the pots. They wash the plates and pots literally in the, in the street. And did get a very slight touch of uh, dysentery, but uh, really not too bad. I had some uh, Cipro uh, that I brought from the States, which I definitely recommend. Took two Cipro, killed everything. Definitely back to normal. Feeling a lot better today than I did yesterday. So that is something to keep in mind when you travel to Asia. Not necessarily the food. You know, it could be the ice cube. It could be the plate or whatever. So definitely not a bad idea to take some antibiotics if you have a sensitive stomach.
water too much. I think you're right. But it wasn't a big difference in price. Only four dollars more for the big one. Here's a spoon for the fried rice. I don't want to look like a dyson on film. My counterpart's telling me it's acceptable to eat the fried rice with a spoon. Of course. And they did serve it with a spoon, but I don't want to feel like too much of a gaijing eating it with a spoon, but I'm starving, so here goes. Mm. Very good. We have some vegetable coming too. Yeah. Ooh, if you get it all off the bone, I'll show the viewers the bone. Wow. So this is the pork shank. I don't want to disturb the camera because I have it positioned just right. But this is the size of the, the pork shank. And uh, this is $12. This whole thing is covered with meat uh, in a soup base. And uh, we're eating that with the rice. And we also have some uh, veggies coming too. It's huge. did order a green healthy vegetable too just to kind of space it out I think we set a new record for getting through an airport it literally coming into Singapore the airport is super, super modern, totally automated, very different from Vietnam where everybody was frustrated and uncertain of what line to go in and the procedures were so loose and the lines were undefined. It, uh, it was really a pleasure to come into Singapore. I think from the time we got out of the plane to the time we got the luggage, and exited the airport it was it seemed like 10 minutes let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say 15 minutes but it was easily the most efficient airport i've ever been to uh, even, even more so than japan really just super modern super efficient you guys will definitely enjoy it well better it later Every time I reach around and touch it, it's going to move. Alright, I'm done. I feel better. Is there any more pork in there? Yeah, there are more. There's a lot more. 
This is the uh, pork shank. We're going to put it over the rice. That sauce can kind of. Ah, very good. Thank you. Oh, that looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And then here we decided to get a little green vegetable. So this is uh, the bok choy. It's really nicely presented. It's got some dried scallions, some sauce. Let's give that a whirl. Hmm. It's really interesting. Try that. You'll see. I don't want to ruin the surprise. Different, yeah? Because the bok choy is served obviously steaming hot and the sauce is cold. So it's a really interesting contrast. I'd say it's probably in the mid 80s and probably 75, 80% humidity. So that sauce is just really nice and light and refreshing. Some of the pork. Mm, very good. Wow. Super tasty. There's some uh, fried caramelized onions on top as well. You guys can see that. I think so. Maybe we could do like this. We could take some of the pork sauce, the broth, kind of drizzle it a little bit to so kind of get some of that salty goodness. Now this is some of the rice with the, the gravy uh, from the pork shank. Mm, that's good too. Gives it like a little bit more depth. Mm, really good. I'm always afraid the camera gets too hot, so every once in a while I'll, you'll see me in the video, I'll, I'll try to edit it out as best I can, grabbing it, taking a look at it, seeing if I'm getting an overheat warning. That's it. Guys, thank you for tuning in. We're going to power through the rest of this. I really apologize, but we gave you a taste of all three dishes, we gave you a taste of the, the beer. And uh, I'm going to shut off now because it is pretty hot and uh, we want to conserve battery and, and all that good stuff. So thank you very much for tuning in. It's Dan Eats the World live from Singapore edition. Thanks again. See ya.